Okay, so in this video, I am going to be going over the chapter three review. Number one wants me to identify the vertex of this quadratic equation by converting to vertex form. What I want to do is I want to group my first two terms together and then factor out only constants. I want to keep the x squared and x. So I'm going to pull out a five. That leaves me with x squared plus four x. And then I have plus 27. Then what I want to do is I want to take a look at my b value inside the parentheses, which is 4. I want to find half of that value and square it. So I have 5x squared plus 4 times x. And then half of 4 is 2. So I want to add 2 squared inside the parentheses. I still have that 27 from before outside. And then I need to do opposite the sign of the 5 because I'm only working with one side of the equation. So I need to cancel out this extra 2 squared I added. So I'm going to subtract 5 times 2 squared. These will always match the numbers. They're just opposite in sign. So then if I rewrite this, I get 5x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then I have 27. 5 times, negative 5 times 2 squared is negative 20. Then what I want to do with my stuff inside the parentheses is I want to factor. So I'm looking for what multiplies to 4 and adds to 4. This is 2. And I have two 2's, so that comes up to being squared. 27 minus 20 is just 7. So now that this is in vertex form, I have... This number right here, opposite the sign, is the x value of my vertex, so negative 2. This number right here, the same sign as my vertex, so that is 7. So my answer here is negative 2, 7. Number 2 wants me to find the x-intercepts of the graph. It doesn't tell me how to do it, so I am going to choose to graph this. I am going to type this into my calculator. I have x squared minus 5x minus 14. If I graph this, comes out looking like this. So I just want to figure out where it's crossing the x-axis. These are called 0, so I'm going to go second trace, 0. I want to be on the left side of the left crossing. I want to press enter. I want to cross the x-axis, press twice. This gives me negative 2. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm going to go back to second trace 0. I'm going to move this black dot until I see it again on the other side. So I see it again. I'm going to press enter. Then I want to cross the x-axis. Press enter twice. And this gets me 7. Okay. So, oh, that 7 looks weird. So, this is my final answer for number 2. Then, moving on to number 3, I want to use long division to solve. So, what I want to do is I first want to make sure I have zeros as placeholders. So, I don't have an x to the 5th, so that's going to be, oops, I wanted 0 in front of the x to the 5th. I don't have an x cubed, and I don't have an x squared. So when I go to write this out for long division, I want to make sure I fill that up. So I'm going to have x to the 6th plus 0x to the 5th plus 2x to the 4th plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 6x minus 9. And then I want to write what I'm dividing by on the outside. I can add my zeros in there if I want. I don't have to with my dividing one. I just have to remember that I have zeros, uh, zero coefficients. Then what I want is I want to turn this x cubed into an x to the sixth. I need to multiply that by another x cubed. So I'm going to write x cubed up here so I remember what I multiplied by. And then I want to distribute down below x cubed times x cubed gives me x to the 6. x cubed times 3 gives me 3x cubed. So then I want to match these up. I have x to the 6 and then 3x cubed. 
Then I want to change my signs and subtract. I am worried I did not give myself enough room on this. So when I subtract the x to the 6th cancel out, I have a 0x to the 5th. That's not important. I want to bring down this 2x to the 4th. I have a negative 3x cubed. And I'm going to bring down all my other terms. So I have 0x squared plus 6x minus 9. So now I'm looking to turn x cubed into 2x to the 4th. I need to multiply by a 2x there. 2x. Stop digging through my trash cat. Sorry. Cat's going through my trash. Uh, so I want to multiply 2x by x plus 3. I'm always multiplying by what I'm dividing by. I distribute, I get 2x, what? This was x cubed. 2x to the 4th, oops, oh yeah, that's fine. And then plus 6x, so then I want to go ahead and line those up. 2x to the 4th, 6x. Then I want to go ahead and add down. So close to giving myself enough room, but not quite. So then <laughs> my x to the fourth cancel out, and then I have negative 3x cubed. My x squared can or is 0, so that stays 0. My 6x's cancel out, so that's 0x, and then I have minus 9 at the end. I still can do cubes, so I want to see what I need to multiply x cubed by to turn it into negative 3x cubed. This is negative 3. So then here I will do negative 3 times x cubed plus 3, which gives me negative 3x cubed minus 9, which if I line it up, good thing I at least wrote in different colors, and I go to cancel it out, gives me 0, so there is no remainder. My final answer is just what I get on my numerator here. Number four wants me to write the domain of this function. Domain is everywhere except for where I have my denominator equaling zero. So I'm going to take x squared minus nine and set it equal to zero. Then I want to add nine to both sides. I get x squared equals nine. I square root both sides. Then I get x equals plus or minus three. So those are where my holes in my graph are because Remember, these are where the asymptotes are occurring. So to write my final answer, I'm going to have negative infinity to negative 3. I always go f starting with my smallest number, unioned with negative 3 to positive 3, because I still have all the numbers in between them that work. And then I start up again at 3 and go all the way to infinity. I only take breaks for my holes. Moving on, number five wants me to list every poss possible rational zero for this function. What I want to do is I want to figure out my p's and my q's. p's are factors of my n number. q's are factors of my leading coefficient. So my factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, and 12. Then my factors of q are just 1 and 5. A lot of people on the quiz lost points for not doing the plus and minuses. Remember, you can have a possible positive number or a possible negative number, especially since my n number has a negative in it. It needs one positive and one num negative to make it a negative. Then for my possible rational zeros, I just take p values and divide by q. So I'm going to take all of these p-values and divide by 1. It's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 again. All of those are plus and minus again. And then I want to take all of those values and divide by 5. So I get 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 6 fifths, and 12 fifths. And this is my final answer. I don't actually need to find my zeros here. I just need to find my rational zeros. So, I mean, possible rational zeros. So, ones it could be. Number six wants me to factor the polynomial to linear factors. Um, given that 2i is a zero. So, knowing that this is a zero, 
imaginary numbers come in pairs. So I have x plus 2i, and then I have x minus 2i. What I want to do next is I want to go ahead and multiply these together. So if I FOIL, I get x squared minus 2i plus, two, oops, 2ix, plus 2ix minus 4i squared, which if I simplify, gets me x squared, the middle terms cancel out, negative 4 times negative 1, which is x squared plus 4. Then what I want to do is I need to keep factoring, so I am going to use long division to factor. So I have x squared plus 4, and I'm dividing into x to the 4th minus 7x cubed plus 8x squared plus 28x minus 48. Then I'm looking for what I need to multiply x squared by to turn it into x to the fourth. This is x squared. So I'm going to do this on my work on another sheet of paper because I did not give myself enough room. So x squared times x squared plus 4. When I multiply that out, it gets me x to the fourth plus 4x squared. So I'm going to line those up underneath. I had x squared that I multiplied up above. x to the fourth, 4x squared. So then I subtract those away, which leaves me with the x to the fourth to cancel out. I have negative 7x cubed plus 4x squared. And then everything else just drops down, 28x minus 48. Then I'm looking for what I need to multiply x squared by to turn it into 7x cubed. This is, or negative 7x cubed, negative 7x. Which when I multiply gives me negative 7x cubed, x cubed, minus 28x. So I want to write this up above that I subtract the 7x. Okay. And then I want to write down what I got left over down below. Lining up with my terms. I want to go ahead and change my signs there. The 7x cubes cancel out. Then I'm left with 4x squared. 28x's cancel out, but I'm still going to write 0x as a placeholder. And then negative 48. Then I'm looking for what I, hmm. I think I messed up. Instead of negative 48, that last number should have been Just kidding, I figured out where my typo was. It was with this 8 up above. It should have been a negative 8. On your paper, it will be correct. This should have been a negative 8 squared. So then that changed it down here. There we go. It's like these weren't working out right. So it gives me negative 12x squared. There we go. So now I'm looking for what multiplies x squared to turn it into negative 12x squared. This is negative 12. So then over here, I'm going to multiply negative 12 by my x squared plus 4, which gives me negative 12x squared minus 48. This looks a lot better. Then I go ahead and try to cancel these out by changing their signs. Those completely cancel out, and that gives me 0. 
Because I want to factor it to linear factors, I want to factor this all the way. So I'm looking for what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 7. This is neg negative 3 and negative 4. And then I want to include the 2 that I got up above. So I'm going to have x plus 2i times x minus 2i for part of my final answer. Number 5 or number seven wants me to find all of the asymptotes given this function. Uh, first find off my vertical asymptotes. I want to go ahead and take my denominator and set that equal to zero. So I have x squared minus four equals zero. Then I wanna go ahead and solve this. I'm going to solve by factoring. You can solve by using the square root method. So then I have my two factors and then what I want to do is go ahead and um, take each of those factors and set equal to zero. So I'm going to have x plus 2 equals zero, x minus 2 equals zero. I'm going to solve them. So I get x equals negative 2. Over here I get x equals 2. These are my vertical asymptotes. Then for my horizontal asymptote, there can only ever be one horizontal. I want to look at my degrees. If they're the same degree, I look at my coefficients. If they're different degrees, if the numerator is larger, I don't have a horizontal, I have a slant. If my numerator is smaller than my denominator, then I have y equals zero. In this instance, they're exactly the same degree. So then I look at my coefficients. I have five over one. So this is five divided by one. So my horizontal asymptote here is y equals five. And then number eight, I asked you to graph and I don't give you a graph. So I will also fix that on your copy instead of looking like mine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out a rough graph for me. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, start off by seeing if I can simplify this. I cannot. There is no way to factor my numerator. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by finding my y-intercepts. I am going to plug in zero for all of my x's. Then I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna type this into my calculator. So I wanna go ahead and type these in parentheses. So I have negative three times zero squared plus two. And then I want to divide by 0 minus 1, which gives me negative 2. This is my y-intercept. So I have that plotted on the y-axis. Then for my x-intercept, I want to take my numerator and set it equal to 0. So over here, I want to subtract 2 on both sides. I get negative 3x squared equals negative 2. I want to divide both sides by negative 3. I get x squared equals 2 thirds. I go to take my square root on both sides. Oops, that's off the screen. Then I'm going to take this on the calculator. So I'm going to go square root of 2 thirds. This gets me x equals 0 0.81. I'll just do 0.8. And then it is also going to give me x equals negative 0.8 on the actual test. These numbers will be much nicer and not decimals. So negative 0.8 and 0.8 are right about there. Those are my x-intercepts. Step four is to get my horizontal or my vertical asymptote. I take my denominator and set it equal to zero. Then I want to add one to both sides. So 
So this gives me x equals 1 for my vertical asymptote. Then for step 5, if I take a look, my degree here is larger on the numerator than the denominator. So this means I have a slant asymptote. I need to use division here. Because I only have one degree on my bottom, I can use synthetic. So I'm going to take my asymptote for the value on the, oops, this is not on the screen, for the value on the outside. And then I have negative 3 for x squared, no x term, and 2. So then I'm going to bring that negative 3 down. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, which gives me negative 1. If I plug this in back in with x's, this is going to give me negative 3x minus 3. And then I have a remainder. My remainder is not important for my slant asymptote. Only the equation of the line is important. So I have negative 3 as my y-intercept, and then I go up 3 over 1. So then I am going to connect these with a dashed line, because this is, again, another asymptote. So, oh crap, it was negative 3. I graphed that the wrong way. So, I started off at my intercept, that was right. Then I want to go down 3, right 1. Oops. There you go. So this is what my asymptote. Oops, you can't even see it. This is what my asymptote looks like. So I did not white out that last one very well. Okay. Then I need to decide if I have enough points plotted. So if I take a look at this, uh, so I have values plotted on the left side of the asymptote. There are three points here, and I'm going to connect them, and it's going to make this um, V-looking shape. Then I want to do the same thing down below. I don't have any points plotted here where I run into my work. So I am going to do step six. This is where I plug in an additional value. I want right of my asymptote, so right of one. So I'm going to plug in two. And then I'm going to type that into my calculator. I'm going to put my whole numerator in parentheses and my whole denominator in parentheses. So I have negative three times two squared plus 2 divided by 2 minus 1, which gives me negative 10. So that tells me it is, this is really terrible because my work's here, but the point is about here. So when I connect them, my graph should look something like this. And I apologize, yours will have the graph unlike mine. <laughs> 